We Got This Africa is an April Communications production proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness. <laughs> when a pregnancy ends by a miscarriage, it can be very traumatic for any woman. Among other things, while you suffer the pain, it can be very difficult to share this with your friends and family because it's one of the things we can't talk about easily. We just can't. Today on the show, I'm going to be talking to Yehoa Adum and Chichi. They're very good friends of mine. And we have something in common. Two things in common. We're all women. And we've all had the unfortunate experience of suffering a miscarriage. Today, if you have suffered a miscarriage, a stillbirth, an ectopic pregnancy, or any pregnancy that did not end with you having your baby in your arms, we dedicate this episode to you. We got this. I'm joined in the studios by Yehoa Adum, a friend of mine from way back in secondary school. <laughs> Yo, Atete. Charlie, when you hear me. It's great you to have you on the show. Me too. Looking good. You too. And the famous Chichi <laughs> of Nyonyo <laughs> Foods. Hi, Chichi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Charlie. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. You look amazing. Thanks. First of all, wherever you are, a round of applause, please. And congratulations for Chi Chi, who's a fresh mama oh, of yeah. twins. How's it going? Oh no. Oh no. But I am Oh, congratulations. And how are they? I know. You know, every time I go on social media and I see her pictures, first of all, her baby bomb pictures were like Hollywood. Like, off the charts. <laughs> off the charts. Off the charts. I, I, I tell you, like, off, off the charts. Like, it was, it was so perfect. And that's one. But every time I go online and I see your videos and your photos with your twins, I get really emotional because it's, it's, it's mixed feelings, like mixed emotions. Because I remember one day in front of the conference center, you and I had a conversation. And I think you had just had a miscarriage. And I look at your pictures and I'm like, I'm happy for you. I'm so happy for you. But then I remember the conversation we had and the things you said to me. And here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Um, I don't know why the topic is very just being like a taboo in our part of the world. It's not unfortunate that so it hits you, then you know that oh my god, it's it's no surprise. It's something that is very common among women. But you question yourself the moment it hits you before you could voice out. So those that probably hadn't shared it up until mm -hmm. now that it's something that people have taken have the mantle to educate other women that girl, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. I've been hit by this as well, by sharing your stories online like myself, like others, making blogs out of it. I didn't even know it happened. I thought if it happens to you, come kids, well no cool, I don't feel no cool wrong. I know it shall no feel you know. And you can even, for I, I for one, I, I was thinking that I mean, if you if you can abortion program, I think I even told her, I'm like, I haven't even aborted a baby before. I've always said to myself, I want to get pregnant with my husband and stuff like that. I, I, if you don't have a I need you, I waited till marriage, like, you know, to try getting pregnant and all of that. Even up until I got married, I love children. One of the charitable things I do is to donate to the orphanage. Okay. I do that religiously every boxing day. So this is December. Thank you, orphanage. Me, I give out things to the orphanage. Even before I got married, I felt like I was showing a city to you know your future, my future, and all of that. And I love children. As young as I was twenty-four, I, someone named your baby after me. They're not Nigerian. They're Ghanaian. Nobody will be chichi. Get what I mean? 
Because I'm not going to So I've been a godmother at a very early age. I wasn't married. None of that. But I'm not going to You know, I love children. Mm. So for me, when I wanted it now, like, so bad, and the misfortune started happening, and I felt like I was alone in this. I look around me, and everyone is like, pop it, pop it. And I don't know if it's just me. Yo, I don't need a kid. When you need a baby, or when you want something so bad, like you want you start to seeing pregnant you women see all, all over all the, place. the place. I know, I yeah. know. Yeah, you start like seeing pregnant, pregnant women. Some don't even want the red car. No, they keep on telling you, mm, no, mm, 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 this is my thing. It's you know this topic. It's sensitive. It's sensitive and it's difficult and. If you have never experienced it, you might not understand. And, you know, I've had things people say about women who suffer miscarriages, like, mm -hmm. oh, at least you didn't, you know, the baby didn't foam. Mm -hmm. Oh, at least you didn't give birth and then, you know, oh, at least, oh, you're young. Oh, at least there are lots of things that people say, sometimes out of concern, but can be very hurtful to you as a mom who has just lost a baby. How many miscarriages have you had? Five. Five? Yeah, five. Oh. Back to back to back to back. Five. I never told anyone. Unlike Chichi, who was telling her friends, probably her family, I never told anyone except my husband. Why? Like you said earlier, I didn't want the sympathy. Oh, if you know Koshuku and Joe, no, I didn't want it. I didn't want the societal sympathy. Like, Devil, you've taken one, two, three, four. But the fifth one, no. You No, when I get, I give birth, I, I know when I when I take seed for the sixth time, I challenged God. I said, No, you said none shall be buried. You will have children as women. So if I lose this one I'm carrying, no, then there's no God. I can't lose the sixth child. And then I got my dance. Five, back to back. Over what period? How long? Two years. Five miscarriages in two years? Yes, no. And it's not just miscarriage, just that lie Just the blood is just good and that's it. You have to go to the hospital. I have to literally go to the hospital, theater, back to back for like seven do times. See. Yes, no. And that's also a very emotional yeah. thing. Like it's, <laughs> you know, it's, yes, you know, at, at the point of a DNC, you know that you have already lost a child. Yeah. But going to a theater to have yeah. a DNC can and, and, be and very you know, difficult. You know, the part that is more difficult is when you know that, okay, you go for a scan. Oh, the baby is forming. It's four weeks. You're happy. You're excited. Young couple. You go and say it's eight weeks. Oh, good. You're good. And then the next week you go and it's, it is not going. What is not going? I was just here last week. There's no heartbeat. It is forming. What is not going? And then the centimeter it has to be now is shrinking. There's no heartbeat. Like, Doctor, my heartbeat is nimble. What is there's no heartbeat? And then, like, throw it in your face like that, you're gone. Right. For the benefit of those who don't know, a DNC is, um, what's it called? Dilation and cutilage or cutilage? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's basically an abortion. Mm -hmm. So it's an abortion. But this time, it's an abortion for a baby that's already has already passed. So the baby's no longer alive. And they have to remove the baby from your inside. So it's an abortion. And even though it's an abortion of a baby that is already dead, it is painful. Did you ever do a DNC? You had a twin pregnancy loss. So what it was is I didn't even know I was carrying twins. On the scan, it was a baby that was forming, but I started feeling some abnormal pains around my hips. And when I want to take, like, when I want to use the bathroom at dawn, I literally will go numb for my waist down from paralyzed. So I what? To take my time to, you know, build up momentum to take a step, then go to the bathroom. So I realized this was not right. This is abnormal. I reported it to my gynae. They just gave me painkillers. So on one scan, if I looked at Eden Query, it was like, could there be anything else wrong? For some strange reason, I don't even know why I asked that question. Then this was when the doctor ruled out because there's something there's ectopic. Yes. That one is easy to identify because mm -hmm. you go there, all symptoms are shown mm -hmm. that you are pregnant, mm -hmm. but when they scan, they can't find there's baby. No baby. Yeah. So clearly there's a baby somewhere, somewhere else. else. But in our case, there was a baby safely in the womb that we all saw. 
So the doctor ruled out anything like ectopic. When it happens like that, that there's a baby in the womb and some child also is not ectotopic. So what he did was to rule out ectotopic. This is a very well respected guy. Mm. We're like, you sure? He said yes. So we had to close the chapter of something new elsewhere and now focus on what to what? do to ease the pain for me. Mm. Says pregnant woman and I was on painkillers like no one's business. You were was pain. fucking pills, you know, to numb the pain because it was unbearable. Nothing I've ever felt before. Fast forward, we had to go for our 12 weeks time. It was two days prior to that, I had catered for an event. And look, you know what? There is something called grace, which has been there for me from my very existence. Not even because when I started trying to get pregnant or anything, but since I was a child, I knew there was something like that that was working in my favor every step of the way. I went for an event that closed at 12 midnight. Listen to this. I was by myself. I drove from the event. I went to safely. Nothing happened. The next day, I had an event. I was to do the same thing, but this time, something. That still voice, if only we could still see that voice. That voice was like, Go with your mom. My husband had traveled. I was even alone in At my marital home. But something said, go and go with your mom. So I went to say she, my mom and I went for this event. If I had gone alone, probably I wouldn't even be here. What happened? What happened was that at the reception, I just started feeling some unusual pain. More like I wanted to use the washroom. Like I had a very bad tummy upset, sort of. We went into the car. Mm-hmm. And me being me, I don't like to trouble people. Let me make my mama 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 to trouble people. I was directing my mom to my hospital. I thought I was able to tell them this is my name, though, but they made up my folder. For the five minutes, I was paralyzed from my waist down. What? I couldn't control myself. I was peeing on me and pulling on me in a wheelchair. I haven't got into my world. They haven't even put me a bed. So if it hadn't been the way everything happened so fast, they would have been taking my case seriously because I walked there myself. And I was telling them that I feel it's an emergency. Our health system sometimes, sometimes can fail us. If they had even listened to me and taken me seriously, the very minute I said this, that three minutes of wasting time and not take, treating me as an emergency, I would have been on the bed and then I wouldn't even embarrass myself right at the consultation room and then I have to be built while I'm peeing and pooping on myself. And wearing my mask then. I mean, because of my individual love, so at least people know this face. It's so embarrassing. No. It's so humiliating. I can't. What's showing you? Just because yeah. people will not even listen to. Oh, oh one on us by. Before we proceed, Jack. I, I kept saying, she's scan, she's scan, she's scan. I need a scan. If she's scan, I need to see if everything was okay. And we were like, we just have to cut people open straight to see what, what? is happening inside. They didn't do a scan? They didn't do a scan. Why? Did they know you were pregnant? You just have to cut me open because they feel something is going on. It was so bad. It was that bad. So they cut me open. I mean, I, I had blacked out. The last night, so I told my mom, not the That's the last night I remember telling my mom, I woke up two days later. Two days. And what it was is, they told me that I had, I was bleeding internally, three liters of blood. If you know, like the big bottle size is not five. Two of those bottles I had bled internally inside my tummy. It was almost really killer, and I was just going around. And they said this has been happening probably for a period of a week because it's like a taking time of being just small, 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 small. That had been ruptured finally on that day. What caused it? Because it was a baby was in the tube. What they had ruled out confidently. The baby had formed your fallopian tube, yes. so it was ectopic. Yes, but they ruled it out. Same hospital, they ruled it out. Okay, there was nothing like. Oh my a god! Anywhere. You could have died. You know how painful it is when 
you even as a lay person, you had your you had like your gut feeling that like, yeah, your husband you know, asked, and my husband asked. You could have read so many things. So for me, I lost two on that day because of the trauma of me blacking out. The, the baby in the room. For the one sitting in the room, they never ate the off. But they were like, they didn't want to go and see because they feel like it's not off. Mm. Honey, they did like a CS on me. <laughs> so what was in the cheap out? Me and Kishina and Bamisane, now they had to do another scan to see if we still have a heartbeat. So when we did that scan, that's when they realized we've lost, let's say baby A or baby B too. So let's say A was the one that you told, we've lost baby B. Now, I have to go back. That's, that's... That's why I made up with you, you know? I could deal with the things, but I was okay with it. Stay tuned, you're watching We Got This Africa. We're talking about the pain of losing a child. And if you have lost a child, you know exactly what we're talking about. It happens to too many women, but we hear too little about it. Stay tuned, when we come back, we'll talk some more. You're welcome back. You're watching We Got This Africa. This is our episode on miscarriages and dealing with child loss. One of the most painful things that can happen to a couple, especially to the woman. And while this is painful when it happens by, you know, natural causes, it's even more devastating when it happens as a result of medical negligence. And Chi Chi, I'm so sorry that you and the family had to go through this. And I hope that by sharing, and if you're listening, you should speak up when you're pregnant or when you're in a hospital, when you're ill. You should read about your condition. You should ask questions and speak up. Because maybe I like... Listen to your body. Yeah. Listen to your body. Because you own your body and you know what you're feeling. Sometimes more than your caretakers can understand, you would know exactly what's happening to you. And I'm really sorry that you had to go through that. It did not have to happen the way it did. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the cutest twins in the Republic. <laughs> Yehoa, what's your story? You have had five miscarriages. That's a lot of miscarriages. A lot of miscarriages. Me after miscarriages, you still have to go through CSs. The clutch, CS. How many times have you been to the theater? Seven times. Seven times. Not just walking to a normal, but real, back to back, seven times. Over what period? Seven years. That's a lot. A lot of times. Your body has gone through a lot of trauma. A lot. It's understood. Tell me about your miscarriages. How did they happen? Did something happen? The first one, car accident. This was just two months after wedding. Going to work. Car from nowhere. Car accident. That one, when I got to the hospital and I realized I was bleeding, I knew. I was, was expecting it. Exactly. You knew something to go wrong. Yeah. So I hit somewhere or something. So then God being so good, and that's just about three months, you know, I am again pregnant. So, oh, okay, that means God is replacing what I lost. Now, the second one, eight weeks, wake up, going to bath, to work, bleeding. 
you go to the hospital, you lose the baby. Second one, maybe I was in a rush to get pregnant. So, and pregnancy is you not. You always want to find excuses for it. Yeah, you try to explain. To explain. Well, nobody is talking about it. She's yeah. Like, okay. So I'm like, okay. And funny enough, as as young as I was, I could have spoken to someone, but I'm like, I've not even heard anyone talking about it. Not even my mother. I could not even tell them. I did not even what, tell them. It was a taboo. It was like a topic that nobody even knew. So you didn't tell anyone? So, no, nah. I only told my pa- my, my husband that nah, I was nah, she she in it. Yeah. It was a yeah. yeah. Okay, so second one, I was okay. Something you feel guilty. Like, what, what is the the guilt. Is it? No, Third time, I was at work. I'm going to use the washroom and I just took my bath. I cried like a baby. God, you may feel, what, I, what did I do? Yes, I may a shit, but I am not a bad girl. No, why, why is this happening? Then you know, and like, hey, this one, if I'm going to tell somebody, you're like, mm, mm, no, like, they'll just, and they'll, 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 yeah. exactly, they'll just add things that is not there. It's probably because you wore high heels, you know, right? probably because you wear a tight dress. Oh, yeah. 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 Ah, four time, fifth time. So the fifth time, the fifth time now, I was pregnant for four months. So the spitting, the obai nyensen, that everybody will know that you are pregnant, was there. I knew at least I'll have a child. Boom. I'm like, no, no. Did something happen? Yes. No. I said the first one that I had an accident, nothing happened. I'm like, no, I trust God. I go to church. I do everything a Christian has to do. I do everything a woman has to do. Go to the hospital, doctor's check, and let teacher will say, let me tell you. Yes, no, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. So from nowhere, and do you know one funny thing? Now, because my parents didn't know, my mom, my parents had to call my husband. They took me all the way to Kufuidia because at one year after marriage, I'm a bad thing saying it. This thing, I had to go to Kufuidia. They have to leave me there for three days. My what? Yes, the woman said they have to leave me there for three days. To do what? No, ma, ma, I told the woman that okay, please give me a month. I'll come back. If I, if if nothing happens, I'll come back. Do you know that moment that my parents took me there because they didn't also know I had miscarried that t- that much? I was pregnant. So if only you are taking any medication from them. Chichi, I, I was pregnant. I was pregnant with Adansia. And Adansia, oh, yes. even at six, at five Imagine months. Imagine that. At five months, I was bleeding. I went to the washroom. I could see my baby like bleeding like that. I'm like, God, no, 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 devil, move, move. You can take one up to five, but this sixth one, you dare not. My dear, I was then in a brief. You know, you know a brief. I was in a brief then. My husband drove me all the way to my hospital. The doctor was like, yo, I don't. It was good you came. You nearly lost this one. I said, doctor, if I lose this child, there is no God. Then challenge me to it. There is no God. So I don't see I was in the hospital for four months. This was my head. This was my leg. This was my position. I worked in the hospital for four months. I am telling you, my dear. My, when you come to my hospital for four months, I have my files there, my work files there. I was literally living in the hospital. And that thought of, you have lost it before, so you lose it. So the anxiety, the anxiety. And then I got, I literally resented literally everybody. You became bitter, you know. Oh, just listening. And they have to go and stitch your womb, and then they will you back. And the most important thing is like, the most important thing No, even that one, I can't put it. No, because I don't put out your own below. Like, the hospitals that I was losing this pregnancy to, it's okay. This one, people have. The, the 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 communication, the way we, we talk to people who suffer loss in this country. God. I've seen it happen so many times. I come to the hospital. I'm like, I'm bleeding. Are you pregnant? It's, it's yes, obviously I'm pregnant. I come to the hospital, and this were various hospitals. I was like, oh, okay. Unfortunately, there's no heartbeat. 
There's no subtle. No, no, they don't even cancel you. No, 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 no. And then they are the way they break the news. The way they broke my news. Just like the the Adans here, Godessa was so good to me that time. Very good. Still, I have three kids. That doctor took me through all three kids. And gosh, you know what I mean? I said, doctor, no, 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 no. I can't lose this one. Throughout, comes to check. Sometimes spotting of blood there and there. Yeah, but then I was just me. God. So I had Adans here. Now, the most painful part of every CNS, I was stitched at the womb, a sec latch, mm -hmm. at that yeah, time, yeah, because it was coming out, room. yes, my dear, yeah. and at the time that I had to deliver, the baby was not coming. I, I stayed in labor for like 12 hours, and it was a six centimeter. That means the baby was ready to come. I was, now, I went into labor. I was the, the since that, that thing that the doctors come to do they put the hand, check and yeah he and they did everything I was I was I lean to me but I was, I am come to hold my child I was excited and all that then all those hours doctor comes to check like you are done I can't work out it looks like where it says let's take a let's let's do a C hey doctor after going through all this pain after after you teaching the thing. That it was coming at five months. Now it is starting. Like you know what? Take me. Just, just take, take. You may mommy. And like she, you said, it is God. Now, lie on the theater bed. Injections. Then the nurses will be there. So they are, this is, these are my nurses. My, my midwives, they are amazing. These are they. They were doing this as well. They were doing this as well. They are good. And they will whisper something into your mouth. Mm. You, you will lose it. Mm. Are you forgotten that thing that you did? We have to talk now. Maybe if I had spoken the first and second time. Maybe, just maybe. But this is our society. They will tell you there's somebody somewhere who is pinching you somewhere. Mm. But the devil is at work everywhere. I, I can only imagine what would have happened if you had stayed at that herbalist. You know? And they had given you whatever to drink. The woman came going to do and the, the Ahabayan, yes, I, yes, it is our culture, tradition, yes, Ahabayan Jew is good, but at that moment... You were pregnant. I, I didn't even know I was pregnant, now. Nah. It's God. <laughs> and then everything the woman said, I was like, yeah, and because my mother did not know I had had all those experiences. Yeah, yeah, she 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 was 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 exactly. Yeah. So yeah. do you know, and do you know one thing? I told my, my parents this I'm sharing to you, after I had a dance here, after I had my child, after I delivered my sick pregnancy, I'm like, Ma, me and I could see my father cry. Mama, what should I tell the mother? 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 I can't imagine. And you were so young. Gosh. How old were you? 27. Was I 27? No, please. 25. 25. 25. And not me. I So I go if it if it happens at work, I will turn me back. I'm going home. So I take it sometimes take it like a normal menses. I go to the hospital and then they will wheel you. Okay, then wait sometimes it's like a week more the blood will work out. You go in this camp. You know there's some small, small things somewhere. You have to go. Then they do that. You know, the painful thing is that while you're waiting and you're in the city, everyone seems to have a say in your life. Hey. That was my favorite thing. You're such a workaholic. Everybody wants to guess, guess why, why there's a delay. She Aside that, and checking those, your weight exactly, and those in the moment you gain a bit and, of and weight. For me, my style has always been very maxi clothes. 
I like comfort. And those who come and say that, ah, hey, it's been a while. Uh-huh, that one. Ah, yeah, like you know you people living for one year. They're not being your friends. friends. Like acquaintances. Hey, it's your home. <laughs> Random. <laughs> now, it's you know, someone, right. someone really actually asked me, hey, me, maybe we'll be there, but that time, I had miscarried. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes, I like to believe that people don't understand how those questions can hurt a woman so for or me, a couple. I teach. I teach. Exactly. But I've never been one to make it look like we were honeyable. Yeah. So I told one lady, I was like, you know, it's, it's a very delicate question you're asking. And it's very intimate. You're, you're coming into my bedroom. This question you're asking is literally you coming into my bedroom. Why is it that if you don't have anything nice to say, why can't you just keep quiet? A topic like, oh, wow, your business is thriving. Oh, I like this hair. Or keep quiet and walk. Or just... Be quiet. Yeah. Steady. Some people will just learn. And, and some, I feel, they do that to intimidate you. you. Really? Because some are not your friends. Look at Exactly, this yeah. They're not even your friend. A lady I used to work out with at the same gym. That is just the base of our friendship. We have acquaintances. We just share the same gym instructor. It ends there. This lady saw me. She came to the restaurant with her two boys. And she was like, hey, Chichi, Unche. And she was with another friend. Who isn't my friend? So I was like, Minche, thank you. It didn't even click. Because for me, I'm looking out for what I don't look, when I'm talking to you, I don't look out for what is missing in your life. Yeah. I like to focus on what is currently yeah. going on. Yeah. That's where I want to, you know, share. Like, I want to praise you in that angle. Yeah. Oh, you're doing what? What's your name? Fine. Exactly. Oh, this is your hair. Yeah. I'm looking at this earring. I'm looking at no, what is missing. Yeah. So then I was like, Mini, Minche. <laughs> Madam, then she told her friend, Madam, for new men in the near court gym, they worry the same year. Indeed. Eh, check it out, physical, what is called? Me, I pick negative vibe from a distance. There are some people that are honestly concerned. But this girl just wanted to make me, like, I don't know what she wanted me to look like in front of her friend, because this is something that even if you care, if you're concerned, one you one. just bring it up yeah. when there's another stranger. And then you have and your, your children, your yeah, and those yeah. Go by, and then I went to this, 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 this person. Then they will not be, sh- and, then, and then showing you places, places, and then recommending people. <laughs> and this happened so fast within five minutes. Nikki made me a B. Yeah. Oh, I called her out. I was like, mm-hmm. don't, don't do, do this that. again. Maybe not with me, but I'm strong. But another person, let me see, they take this shit. Yeah, for me. Hey, me, I'm for me. I, 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 I. And I make sure she apologizes. And I told her, I demand an apology. Oh, I can go share it. And I was like, Jay, share more. It's not funny. No. It's not funny. How can that be? Did you share more? Do you have my number? I made it look like, yeah. no. I made a friend understand. I wanted a friend to understand that. Me and her are not on that level. Yeah. I was like, do you have my number? And hopefully what she learns. Down? I hope she learns. she learns. It's a problem. And I had kids, I was like, exactly. Let this happen again. Get more clear. Eat this shit. Eat half food. Oh, mess up again. Exactly. Exactly. Sometimes, even if it's coming from a place of genuine care and love, know how these things affect the people you are discussing them with. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. And even if you are praying for them, you don't need to come and tell them that I am praying for you. That's it. Pray for them in your house. And let yeah, people be. And because you don't know what people are going through. And I should go to Adam. Not everybody wants a child. Exactly. <laughs> and they don't owe you an explanation. Not everybody wants a child. Because for and us, they don't owe you an explanation. Two years no, into marriage before we tried. Now, we knew that we've, we've just started our businesses. We want to set things up. Then we bring on babies. But for someone who can make a robot, we need to lay, we need to have a bedtime. We want to be present parents, not perfect, but very present parents. So from the onset, because I've dated this guy for eight years, this is my partner, this is my life partner. Like we, we are very intentional. time No, actually, it's true. I have a friend, a Tawabi, and a girl. Aside the fact that, that we all don't want the same thing. We don't want the same thing. We don't want the child. If children are gifts from God, we don't and want to buy them. Not everyone will have exactly. a Not everyone wants not one. Not everyone will have. But everyone you know, we are not socialized to think that. Exactly. This is how it's supposed to be. University, national service, ah, get married, married have children. Yeah. That's, how, that's how we are socialized to think. And so first, we cannot wrap our minds around the fact that someone might not want a child. Secondly, we cannot wrap our minds around the fact that someone has gotten married and the first thing on their list to do 
We cannot wrap our minds around that. But people of God, times are changing. The way we were raised, it's, it's great. But that's not how every, that's not the, 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 the life trajectory that everybody wants. And even if they do, it doesn't lie in any of, in your mouth to inquire about what's happening in someone else's uterus. It's not, it, it's not nice. Even if it's coming from a good place, your questions will not quicken their, their, their pregnant, their, their capability of getting pregnant. Your concerns will not quicken it. So if you want to pray for them, pray in your house and in your heart. You don't need to come and inform them about your prayers. I'm praying for you. No. If they come and tell you their problem, that, oh, you know, I'm trying to have a baby and this and this is, and, and, and you know, this was happening, then you can have the conversation. But until then, don't. And teacher, I tell you, even when you told me, and we were recording something, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you picked me up from Pali. We went to exactly. Even then, I mean, I I was listening to you, but then, and I, I told you that I had also had a miscarriage earlier, like earlier, earlier about a couple of years before, and I had just had a baby, and I was struggling, and I wasn't seeing top at all, and I had my own struggles. And you told me, I remember you said one time that now, sometimes when people have said to me, "Oh, you look like you have gained weight," I hadn't gained weight. I was actually I had just lost a pregnancy. <laughs> That hit me because I had had a similar experience. And it hit me so much that when I saw, when I first saw, I mean, you had told me you were pregnant. What were you recording season yeah. one of the show? Yeah. You were supposed to be on, yeah. but then you were pregnant at the time. So when I, I finally saw your pictures on social media, I can't tell you. <laughs> I was with my friend Sumaya at the time. I cannot tell you that, I mean, I knew you were pregnant. I knew the babies were coming. But I cannot tell you the joy I felt and how excited I was. And... You know, we all have our struggles, eh? But it all ends well. It does. Yeah. It always ends well. It does. And while I believe that everything happens for a reason, sometimes it's so difficult for me to accept that everything mm-hmm. happens for a reason, especially when the things that happen are so painful. Yeah. But this story of yours, this story of yours, this story of mine, is what will hold somebody through a difficult time that they're in right now. Yeah. And so for that, we thank God. Yeah. That just by the fact that we're having this conversation, somebody somewhere will rest in knowing that, you know, troubles may last for the night. Mm-hmm. But joy comes in the morning. And so all is well. And, and for the woman watching and waiting, why I was sharing my story was to let people know that like, we all don't have it figured out. And nope. I won't be myself just because of the one thing I'm waiting on God for. Well, but while I'm waiting, while you are I'm waiting, while you are waiting on God, honey, find your purpose. Mm-hmm. Pursue it with all your passion. Look, time waits for no man. All you are there brooding and all of that. It wouldn't change anything. Time is passing. Mm-hmm. And then just do what you are supposed to do medically if you have to. And wait on God. Exactly. While you are getting busy. Don't don't because other women come into my DM and they're like, they don't know how I was doing it. When it wasn't coming, I saw my mojo and I mean I was happy. You all of chilling, I was all over the place. I'm like, honey. I tell you. Then he made me do a blog in it. With or without a baby. Honey, Chichi's gonna try. I'm going to win. Maybe I'm even supposed to adopt some baby. I, like I was considering all these options. Because everyone shouldn't have a child. I mean Biologically, there are babies out there that need things. Exactly. You should consider all these things. It's like we are set up in a way that it's supposed to go this way. Socialization. It's our socialization. Exactly. If your body cannot carry, don't take your body through that stress. There are surrogacy options now. Like, I I don't know whether, because I'm open minded, but honey, don't beat yourself up. Because you end up losing yourself. Mm-hmm. You have more bashing, mm-hmm. and life will go on. Mm-hmm. For the people, people have and some like people even beat themselves, not because of their own feeling, but what so other people have feeling. said, other people will say, what their friends will say. Mm-hmm. Societal expectations is what will weigh mm-hmm. us down and kill us. Mm-hmm. See, I'm so glad you have said all the things that you've said because when in this year that we are in. Mm-hmm. We have moved forward. I mean, we have advanced medically. There are so many ways to bring a baby into your life. Not all of us must carry our babies. 
it's very sad that you carry one and lose it. It's the most painful thing you can experience as a woman. But even if it happens, we should open our minds to all the possibilities there are to having mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. And you know, when I first heard about Gabriel Union, and you know, I, oh it. God, I was so happy. I mean, I was so happy to hear about it because, I mean, then we can see that it's possible. Exactly. She's so brave. Mm-hmm. It's possible and you can be happy and love the child and that's your child. It is your child. That's your child. And, and you know, among other things, I think it's time for us Ghanaians and Africans to open our minds to all the possibilities there are. Yes, do all you can do medically like you said, but open your mind to all the possibilities there are and don't beat yourself up so much and, and, and drown in sorrow because you think that your body has let you down. I think it's a good time to take a break. Okay, watching We Got This Africa, this is our episode on miscarriages and loss. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. You're watching We Got This Africa. And we're just wrapping up our conversation here on miscarriages and dealing with child loss. You are. After five miscarriages, you have three amazing children. You sent me a photo once during your morning drive to school. I looked at your kids in the back of the car and I thought, hey. <laughs> like, I'm very happy for you. And for how you have managed through this very difficult situation to continue to thrive in your life, your business. And now, I've and had my three kids. I have 10 godchildren. Ten. Do you know all their names? Yes. <laughs> That's ten yes. human beings. Yes. Wow. Yes. Ten. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. But what would you say to women who are watching us, you know, uh, who are going through this, are probably trying for a child and they are not getting pregnant or have gotten pregnant and have lost their babies or have given birth and have still lost the babies? Sometimes, my sister, my friend, I'll call you my sister because you're a woman. See, like Chichi said, I have one adage I normally say. So, Usu said, Daya, Ujai him. No matter how you cry, you wait, you pause, and you sneeze. When there's a loss, we, we, we are forced to say they are part of us. But don't beat yourself. We aren't God. And I believe in my Bible. It says that none shall be barren. So we will not be barren. We will have a child. Whether we lose it or we don't, we will have a child. So, my dear, don't beat yourself. Thrive forward. When the child is not there, work on you. Work on other things around you. Pick up a child somewhere. Take care of that child. That child could open your room. That child could bring you breakthroughs. Don't focus on you alone. Sometimes, when we, are, when we want it for ourselves, that is when it doesn't happen. And when we want it for others, that is when it happens. So my dear, don't beat yourself. It will come at the right time. You have a beautiful Adanthia in Kunim and mm. Semesia, just like myself. And my ten godchildren. So my dear, <laughs> don't beat yourself. You will have a child. Amen. And you will win eventually. Amen. Amen. Yeah, winning, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're winning anyway. <laughs> Chichi, how important is it to get help when you go through or experience a loss like this? Yowa said she was by herself. She never told anybody and she dealt with it by herself. But you shared. What drove you to share and did it bring you help? Um, what drove me to share is for everyone to know that we all don't have to figure it out. And while in waiting, that doesn't mean that everything stops. You have to start to pursue your passion and you still have to live, you still have to thrive, girl. I mean, you can't come and die, you're not good. What can function come? If only we could see the end from the beginning, we would not even be, I mean, yeah. this. 
Our support was very vital in my case because I shared, of course, so my in-laws, my husband. There was never a case that anybody brought up a topic like childbearing in my home or among my family settings when we have functions or anything. No one has ever even questioned me, even proud to sharing. So I like that support. You know, typically in-laws, no, 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 not my in-laws. They are very open-minded and they feel it's a sensitive topic. So nobody ever even picked it up. And when I experienced it and they knew, trust me, they were there for me. I mean, sending prayers my way, I know they didn't have to tell them, but I could feel the energy. My husband was like nice, but extra, extra nice. I mean, just <laughs> let me know that, look, yeah. with or without, he is here. I already have a big baby in him. I know that, right? You know, <laughs> just kind of yeah. that. it really, really, really can shift the mood. So support is very, very important. Please, find a friend. Find an auntie, find your mom, find a relative, open up to somebody. Sometimes when you share these things, it will make you know that you know, this experience has happened to a lot of people. And maybe you could even seek some help from them. Yeah. Someone could point you in the right direction. Yeah. Because I, for one, my gynae, trust me, you will not even believe who introduced me to my gynae I when I got pregnant. <laughs> it was some random woman actually, just because yeah. I opened up to her at one point, and she was yeah. like, this pregnancy that I'm carrying mm-hmm. now, she doesn't want any long, long stories. Mm-hmm. She wants her gang to say problem. So you see, mm-hmm. once you share, you never know where, where your help will come from. Exactly. So please, open up. Exactly. And once you share, support will be there. Chichi, here I do. Thank you so much for coming. I am so glad that you guys came on this particular show. And I do hope that our conversation today helps you listening to us if you're dealing with loss. My name is Nasha Kaur, and this has been We Got This Africa. Thank you so much for watching. We Got This Africa is an April Communications production proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness.